Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new video on the YouTube channel of Darts Actueel 2A. We are honored um, with a former BDO world champion and a PDC tour card holder. Now it's uh, Scott Mitchell. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us in this little interview. Um, yeah, how does it feel to be a PDC tour card holder? <laughs> Great, actually. I'm, I'm not 100% sure it's sunk in. Uh, I'm an old guy, you know, it's a young guy sport, remember? I'm 50. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, you are certainly a guy who belongs there. Did you expect to get a tour card? I know it's a difficult question, but... Do you know what? This time I did, actually. Last year when I went, I, I it was all very new. And I, I just lost the semi-final of the O2. And uh, I was coming out of there. And then within three days, I'm 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 at Q school. And, I, and I've got to be honest... It was, I was, I, my head probably wasn't in the right place to, to, to go and do it. I played really well and I finished third in the Q school averages and everything, but I just couldn't finish games off. So, um, and when I did feel like finishing games off, Scott Waits beat me on the last day. So I may have won a card last year on the last day, but he did. So, um, yeah, he owed me that one. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm over the moon and I, and I really felt that I could go and get it. And, and sometimes when you feel overconfident about getting it, um, you draw Fallon Sherrick and get beat first day. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, you uh, thanks to a, a great uh, Champions Tour season, you already qualified for this in this new Q school system for the, the final stage. Uh, did you see it as an advantage of not playing the first stage? No, not at all. Um, because of the COVID times, I think I think at any other time maybe. Um, I'd have felt different about that, but but I, I although I was lucky enough to have played the last sort of pro tour mm -hmm. um, at the start of November, I hadn't really played another person. You know, we we done bits online and um, practiced with friends. Uh, other people, Ben Hazel, he was in it. Um, we we played a few games online. James Harrell, I've played games online with. So uh, Jason Heaver, um, Nick Nick Fulwell. We, we've all played games and had a little league, had a mould. We all had a little league that we were trying to get ourselves going after Christmas to try and have three weeks practice, but it's just not the same. Um, and, and, and it just, like you say, it was, it was very difficult, but then I think it was the same for everybody else, but we are such clever dart players. We only think it's happening to us. Mm -hmm. but we don't think that it's happening to everybody else in the room as well. We're just clever enough to think it's only me it's happening to. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Um, you had uh, a very, um, well, difficult first three days of, of Q school. Um, yeah, you already said the first day you lost to, to Fallon Sherrick, second day to Jack Main, who obviously won, won his tour guard. Um, the third day you got into the last 30, uh, 32 was only worth one point. Um, yeah, where are those first three days, uh, frustrating th uh, three days for you? Very much so. I think I think had the first three days happened to me as a twenty year old guy, I would be I would have been absolutely frustrated, mm -hmm. over trying on the last day, and, and and just making it not possible. I think that can happen. Uh, the Fallon game, Fallon played great. You know she played great. I've got no problem with that. I wasn't quite on my game. Um, Mark of the game made a couple of mistakes and uh, at wrong times, and, and nobody likes that. And nobody sees that. Uh, and also we had we had the cameras, um, you know, I haven't played for four months or anybody and then the last person you want to draw is Fallon and then uh, the cameras come up behind the board as she was beating me and then I get it back level and then they go away again and then the cameras came up behind the board when she got in front again. So um, kind of, kind of, uh, it didn't upset me. I, got, I kind of found it funny that I let it get to me because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm quite strong mentally and I don't usually... Something's got to be really bad and really obvious for, for, for me to, to get upset. And I, and, and I wasn't upset. I was upset um, that, that maybe it got to me. So you're then thinking, it's OK, that's just one day. We've got three to go. And then you draw Jack Main. And you think, well, that's OK. Jack's had a great day yesterday. You know, he's going to be a bit apprehensive today. You know, he's going to be a bit nervous. He hasn't sealed the deal. So he's, he's playing a former world champion. And in the first, he was 3-0 up and on 133 average in three legs. That's how nervous he was about playing me. Not at all. No. So I'm sort of tired to peg him back and peg him back, but I, I missed. I missed a big chance. I missed a big chance in the fourth fourth leg. I missed a dart a double top, and then I won the next two after that. So I would have been at three three, uh, but I, I was obviously at four two, and then I think he finished with 104 half average. So 
I can't complain at that. You know, you, you then go to bed that night thinking, yes, on paper, I've had two first round losses, but realistically, they were two really tough games because of what they were. So, like I said, I, I, it never, I never let that get to me. And then um, the third day, losing to Joe Mernon with a 97, I, I was just, I was just all over him, and I just couldn't get a dart out. Every time I, I got myself into a good position, Joe would shoot out on say 100 or 96 or whatever, and, and those are the shots that win you and lose your games. And uh, you know, I would, I'd be sat on tops after hitting 60 or 57 whatever and then Joe was taken out the 90s so fair play to him I had no problem with that so so on the on the morning of uh you know I, I probably by the third time that I'd lost I was then thinking we really are on last chance corral and you know had I mm -hmm. had I thought I could have jumped off the bed and hit myself on the head without marking the floor and breaking the ceiling of the room above whatever I'd have probably done it but um I went to breakfast knowing that with one point I probably needed to make the final so mentally knowing what you've got to do, um, that was okay, but you then have to get through the first game. And I drew Alan Norris first game and you're just thinking, this just is not fair. This no. is not fair. It's like picking on the man in pink it is not fair. So um, I managed to beat Alan with a great average and, and that really set me up for the next three or four games. So uh, until I got to the semi-final where I played Andy Gildin and, and, and I, I thought I had to win that game and my, my arm went to jelly and my knee started wobbling. I haven't had this since well, 10, 12 years. I haven't been nervous like that, throwing a game of darts. Um, but my wife was watching from home and probably most of the people at home were watching from home and, mm -hmm. and checking. And they knew that I was already through, but I was keeping myself to myself and trying to stay focused and staying away from everybody. And um, I don't have a manager sort of coming up to me saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that, because I wouldn't have wanted that anyway. Mm -hmm. I just I just fixed on trying to get to the final. Uh, and then when I eventually got there, because it was a terrible, terrible game, I was so lucky. Um, and, and and then to get to the final, and, and and Danny looked really nervous, but but again, I was just trying to stay out of it. Once, I, once you got to the final, and I knew that I was safe when I was in, um, it's just a case of going and winning it. And really, you can just throw your own game and go and win it because you're safe and you've got a card. And um, for me, I wanted to then go through. Once I played so well all day, I wanted to go through and, and win the card outright. I didn't want to go through on points, you know, and and, uh, and and I managed to do that. So, but but where it came from, I'm not really sure. And And I think people that have followed me for a long, long time know that I do everything the hard way anyway. So... Uh, I make things difficult myself and then sort of come out the corner punching. So uh, mm. that's, that's pretty much what happened. Well, you, you certainly did uh, come out great. And uh, you answered all my questions already about, about Q school by, by, by you talking. So no, that's great. Um, yeah. You said you were I messed up the interview already. <laughs> no, that no, no, fantastic. obviously <laughs> no, you said um, uh, the nerves came with uh, on you in the, the semifinal. Yeah. Um, yeah, was Q school and especially because you knew that last day I have to perform now was it one of the toughest uh, tournaments you you've ever played in your career yeah pretty much it it, it is but it, it I look back at it now and I, I can't really remember what I was thinking it was only a few days ago I, I was really just thinking win games win games I wasn't looking at trying to to make the final you, you've just got to play one game at a time and uh one of the games I had to do a hundred average to beat uh was it Stephen is it Stephen McDonald I think it was in, in the quarters and or, or the, the the second round or something and he was amazing I've never seen him before from Scotland and he was amazing he's he said he'd had a 10-year break and fancied coming back wow um and I think he did a 94 or something and, and I did 100 to beat him so I think when when you start having to be forced to play it then comes a bit easier if somebody's doing a 77 against you and you've got to go and win the game Mentally, that's very hard to do. It, it sounds easy, but when you actually really need it, it's hard to do. So I didn't have that. Everybody was hitting 90 averages. So the, the minute I came off it, I was losing the leg because I was getting punished. So um, I think that's probably what got me through more than more than thinking about last chance or anything else. It was just, if I need to win this game, I've got to stick with him. So the, the mental side of that was probably what got me through it. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you are an experienced player, so... That's one of the one of the uh, the reasons why you got the uh, through. Um, one of the reasons why you got such an experienced player was, you know, the BDO circuit, the D WDF circuit. Um, 
uh, yeah, the BDO f f has fell, fell down. There's no BDO anymore. Or, um, at least, <laughs> yeah, well, according to most of the guys, there's no, <laughs> no BDO anymore. Um, if you look on Facebook, there's still a few posts about the BDO last night, but there we go. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to point any any names or, or something. No, like no, nor do I. But there you go. I, yeah. I'm, I'm finding it. I'm finding it quite um, amusing. I think for me, with the BDO as a player being right involved, mm -hmm. I kind of. I think a lot of us knew quite a way out that that was going to go wrong. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to ask you, um, like related to the BDO, do you think you are? Um, well, you have to be uh, like a little bit extra happy that you, you're earning your tour card on this moment in your career because we don't know what the WDF is going to organize. There's no BDO. I mean, it is the, be the best moment of your career to get a PC tour card holder as a BDO player, right? I, I felt I was kind of forced to do it, to be honest. I, I, think, I think last year going, as I said, it was really late late sort of day that I, I decided I was going to go I, I said about going in November and then I changed my mind again and then I and then we got to the O2 and I and I I kind of realized before that that we were we were in trouble I think probably at the World Masters before the O2 I think mm -hmm. I think the BDO was in trouble and, and I'm, I'm and I'm all really and I'm, I'm really sad about it actually because um it, it kind of made me mate and and, and over here we, we, the system, the way that it worked here in the UK was that you, you basically, you play darts in your local pub and your local town or your local league or whatever. And when you get good and one of the best players in your local town, then there'll be a local super league that sort of like takes in three or four towns from around you. And they try to put the best eight players together and, the, and go and play other towns around your county. So then I got asked to go and play for that. And then when you get really good at that, they then ask you to play for your county. So the best players within your, your province, your region, your county. So I, I came up through the ladder with, with people who were captain in these teams coming and asking me. It wasn't like I was pushing to push myself forward to get to the front of the BDO. It was, it was the way that the BDO worked in every county, in every area, and every Super League had guys like this doing it all up and down the country. So that's how we kind of found the players locally and took them from locally to sort of national so um i think i think it's a sad thing that it's gone but mm -hmm. you look at it and we can't keep looking backwards it's 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 a done thing it's it you know it went wrong at the end it's it's a done thing and um i think there were a lot of people saw it a long way before it, it did go but we've now got the wdf of uh, uh, looking to to try and sort this out and and they seem to be doing it from from the bits and snippets that i'm hearing although they're not playing unfortunately you know, it's not like the PDC where it's funded elsewhere. It's it's funded by players basically putting arms on dartboards and playing. So that's mm -hmm. where all the funding comes from for the WDF. So they realise that. So that's been the hold up. I think most of the stuff in the procedures are, are, are most of the way there to, to get a circuit running and, and take over from where the BDO were. So that's great. Um, here in the UK, we've got Mad Darts as well, which is, is starting to come up regionally. Um, Again, that hasn't really took off yet because of because of the COVID and, and nobody being able to move around and do anything. Um, England darts are still up and going strong. So, um, and of course, the UK darts organisation has taken on the county part of the BDO. So, um, I think here in the country, and I think mostly most of darts in the world, we're, we're a very lucky sport. To, to we're blanket covered. I mean, for whatever age, whatever you, any person that wants to throw a dart can throw a dart generally and they can throw in the disabled darts stuff they can there's youth world cups there's youth stuff there's there's women's darts there's there's men's darts and in some countries they even play over 50 so i can't wait to go back there so um you know they, they, every dart player that wants to throw a dart somewhere can do it and not all sports are like that not all sports are blanket covered and I, i'm sure there's a lot of sports jealous of darts because because mm -hmm. we, we've got every every aspect covered yeah, darts is a beautiful sport, and I'm sure the local structure will be uh, uh, all right in in the UK as well. Uh, we'll just have to wait and and see what these organize organizations uh, will organize eventually. Um, yeah, let's go to your next two years. You you will be a PDC tour card holder. Um, uh, we'll, you'll have to uh, you'll you'll be meeting um, you know some of your old BDO friends maybe. I mean, there's Scott Baker, Mark McGinney, Scott Waits, 
Glenn Durant, Nick Kenny, Martijn Kleermaker, David Evans, some names we, we've written down. Um, many, many BDO players also from your time uh, having a PDC tour card uh, already now. They are on their tour. Um, yeah, will you feel welcomed on, on the, the PDC tour card? I'm, I'm with sure. all these I, mean, guys I was number one last year in the Challenge Tour, so mm -hmm. I did a few last year as well. So I had, had what they call in the UK the golden ticket. Um, <laughs> which uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory didn't turn up and I didn't get loads of chocolate. But um, I managed to get to a few Pro, pro Tours, so uh, I know what they're a bit, little bit more about. And like people said, oh, it's a new adventure for you. My, my local press have gone, what a new adventure. And I, I said, really, it's like getting in a time machine and going backwards, if I'm honest. I'm going back to, to the, oh, I mean, I was around when Gary Anderson was still in the BDO as well. So, I, you know, I've been around that long. I just started the BDO circuit then and, um, and, and I sat with Gary at a couple of tournaments. So. Um, if you go back to like 2009 and anybody's gone over from then, it, it is like, you know, it is, it is your friends that are over there. And it, it's people that I've played with and been in the same room a lot before. But obviously, once you involve the, 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 the quantities of money that are, are very different than, you know, getting 80 quid for a quarterfinals, 80 euros at the BDO for a quarterfinal and you, you start getting sort of three and four grand. And that's <laughs> very difficult to be friendly over a little bit more money, a few I euros, you know what I mean? That's fine, or, or a few pounds or whatever. That's that's fine. But but when you start playing for for, for more money, then um, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm sure that the yeah, you know some of the handshakes are mm -hmm. to keep you away. I can imagine the the atmosphere more being more competitive and stuff like that. You already talked about you having the golden ticket by doing uh, having a great uh, challenge tour season. So you actually already got the. Uh, um, Quite some prize money as well you got into the last 32s last 64s um yeah you already have experience on the pro tour now do you feel like um well i mean it's it's an easy question but do you feel like this extra um experience on the pro tour will will help you um like starting grades right away uh, hopefully it does I'm, i'm really hoping it does you, you can never can tell because i think um the, the draw is massive in the in, in the pro tours the draw is massive you you can i mean, my, my first one i dropped on mvg um and uh yeah i lost six two uh, my first leg i won off him i shot 170 shot out and the second leg i won i shot double one wow so i had two legs and i shot the two the two opposite ends shot out that you could have i think i think a lot of it depends on the draw obviously the seeds at the top of the bottom of the group and um no draw is easy no draw is easy in any way, shape or form. When you look at all the players, there's no easy games. Um, there are more favorable draws, but they're, they're, I wouldn't say there's an easy draw in any way, shape or form. And it's a lot of it's in the preparation. You know, you can't can't be doing things last minute on the morning of, of, of the matches. If you, if you kind of make a mistake in your preparation last couple of hours before, it makes it very difficult to win your first game because of the standard. And, I, and like I say, I know that from having been there for, for, for the few times I did. So, um, I'm just excited about it again. You know, I, I, I really thought that I may only get a few goes at it with, with the challenge tour. And um, yeah, I, I didn't expect to be back. I really didn't. Not, not, not this quickly. I thought that uh, I'm a bit of a slow learner in darts. I don't get on and do things. You know, I go to Lakeside and lose first round three times, you know, before I actually get a grip of what I'm doing. So um, I'm hoping that not to be the case now that, now that I'm the ripe old age that I am. Mm -hmm. Well, you you will be back on the tour. You will be playing um, on the at the Super Series. Um, yeah, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? What are your expectations on on playing on the tour? To, to be honest, I've got no expectations straight off the bat. I've, I've really I just want to go there and start playing well. And and if the games come and you win the games, you win the games. I think I don't want to go over there and kind of freeze. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, because a lot of people are tipping you to do well and. Um, you know, and, and obviously there's comparisons with, with when Glenn went over and um, in, in the UK and I, and, I, and I don't really want to, to go down that route. I just want to go over, try and get my averages out there, get my games out there and hopefully win a few and, and try and build some confidence because it really is like starting again. Mm -hmm. Is it also with this mindset, how you will schedule your, your next two years as a tour card holder, not really setting one um, like expectation point for yourself, but just see and see and do your best and see how it goes yeah i mean mo most people know that it, you know it's never been those people see me as a professional dart player it's never been my full-time job um obviously i have a small farm and 
we, we've got to we've got to weigh up over the next few months which is the best way for me to do it is it to to take on a manager to take the dark side of things out of the way so that i can continue to manage my farm and then a manager just sends me my tickets or whatever and says you need to be at this hotel this flight this car park whatever to be picked up or whatever we're doing um is it going to be easier for a manager to do that or is it going to be easier for me to manage myself so that mm -hmm. i'm doing things and going at times when i want to go um and maybe getting farm contractors in to do some of the work that i'm not going to be around to do on the farm um my son helps out my daughter helps out katie my son sam and obviously sharon does lots of things and and helps run the paperwork side of the farm anyway so um it's just a case of getting that balance right for my head to allow me to play i can't be at a pro tour thinking or as, as somebody fed those cows or as somebody put an ear tag in that new calf or have we phoned the electric board about whatever, I can't be doing that. That, that I can't go away with that. So we, we've got to find out what the happy medium is to, to, to make my head work, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think the darts community is ready to see a BDO Legends play on the on the PDC and we are ready to see the BDO Legends slowly becoming a PDC legend. Uh, thank you for this little, little interview, uh, Scott Mitchell, and uh, I wish you all the best for uh, your coming next two years as a PDC tour card hold. Thank you, mate. Lovely to chat. Always good to chat with the guys in Holland.